All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem meaning in the name, and Yahweh Shai being the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to. But our Israelites, and I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, so coming to you with another lesson, Baha Rakak with us and the Holy Spirit. And what I want to get into is uh, breaking down the tribe of Asher. All right, you've got guys currently um, that are trying to speak against the 12 tribes chart, saying that it's inaccurate, uh, saying that... Um, uh, that you can't identify uh, each tribe, you know, in, in, in any way, you know, and so on and so forth, really just pushing out a faithless uh, doctrine. But uh, ultimately, you know, that's false, man. You know, the scriptures not only gave signs upon the nation of Israel as a whole to know that we are the Israelites, but he also gave each tribe prophetic IDs, should I say, all right, prophetic identifications specific to that tribe. All right, so there's a specific prophetic ID to identify who Judah is. There's a specific prophetic IDs to identify who Benjamin is, all right? Levi, Simeon, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, Issachar, you know? Each tribe has a prophetic ID. It's lucky, all right? And um, we're going to go into those, you know, specifically uh, Asher, Today to look at their prophetic ID in the scriptures and see if it links up with the sign, man. All right. So without further ado, you know, we're going to jump straight into it. And Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. All right. So uh, to set the platform, we already understand, you know, pursuing the second Ezra the 13th chapter. I'm not going to grab it, but pursuing the second Ezra the 13th chapter. All right. After the, the reign of King Solomon, you had the split. Of the uh the southern and the northern kingdom, all right. The southern kingdom being Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the northern kingdom being Simeon, all the way down to Issachar. All right, they split, and then the northern kingdom was taken into captivity under the Assyrians, all right, and then eventually uh gathered amongst themselves and came over, all right, uh took ships, entered the river Euphrates, came over, went down through uh the Euphrates, uh through the uh the Persian Gulf, around Africa, and over to the land of the Americas, all right? Just wanted to roughly paraphrase that. You can read that in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, all right? 40, the 40th verse on down, all right? So that's what happened. So we know already that we can identify, just off of that chapter alone, that the northern kingdom is over in the Americas, all right? Plain and simple, all right? But it gets more specific onto who is where, what characteristics they will have, and how you will be able to identify. All right, so Asher, it says the Colombians to the Uruguayans, all right? Now, looking at a map here, we've got, and I'm going to try and zoom in here, you know, so brothers can see it. All right, you've got, <clears throat> zoom in a little bit more, all right? So you got Colombia, and then you got Uruguay, all right? So Asher runs pretty much everything north of Argentina and Chile, all right? Because according to prophecy, <clears throat> Nephtali, which Lord willing, we might even grab that, just that one verse, uh, getting into Nephtali and Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, the 33rd chapter. But Nephtali was going to uh, prophesy to to um, to dwell in the south and the uh, the west, all right? And this is the south and the west that they were prophesied to, uh, to have, man, all right? And uh, Asher has everything else. So this whole continent is split between Asher and Nephtali. Nephtali having Argentina and Chile. <clears throat> and uh, Asher having everything north of that, man. Everything else, all right? All right, cool. We got that established. All right, so let's jump back here. So this is Genesis chapter 49. And we're going to start at verse 1. It says... And Yikwab, and just a quick point here, all right, real quick, you know, you got people that want to be simple. So are we saying that that uh, even though Asher has uh, north of uh, Chile and Argentina, that there's no Asherites in Argentina? 
Absolutely not. Yeah, there there may be some asteroids in Argentina and Chile, and there may be some uh uh, uh some uh some people from the tribe of Neptali, all right, that are in uh Venezuela, Peru, and so on and so forth. But chiefly overall, all right, this is Asher. Chiefly overall, Neptali is Chile, uh, uh is in Chile and Argentina. All right, so let's not get simple here. All right, let's stay spiritual. This is uh, Genesis 49 and 1. And Yaikwa and Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. So these are the things. These are going to be signs, identifiers, spiritual identifiers to know who each tribe is specifically in these last days, man. All right. And we're going to show you that, man, through the spirit of power. Yah, Bashem, Yah, Bashai. All right, Genesis 49 and 20. Let's get into it. It says, Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. All right, it says, His bread shall be fat. So we're going to focus on that first. All right, so let's look up bread first. <clears throat> all right, bread, the Hebrew word, lacham, lacham. All right, bread, food, grain. Bread, 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 uh, corn, food in general. All right. So this is talking about his uh, uh, his food, his uh, resources as well, man, as we're going to prove. All right. Bread. And then it says corn. All right. Keep that in mind. Corn. That's going to be something that comes up as well. All right. So we got bread. <clears throat> it says out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. So let's look up that term shall be fat. All right. Fat. It says fat, rich, robust. All right. Fat, rich of food. All right, so Asher is prophesied to have a richness and abundance in food. All right, so let's see uh, what information we can gather to see if that fits them specifically. Because all the tribes, all the land of the Americas before Esau came over here and uh, started doing all this deforestation and destroying everything, all of the Americas... All the way up from Canada, all the way down to the bottom of uh, uh, Argentina and Chile, all right, was a uh, uh, fertile and had great, uh, great abundance in uh, uh, food and everything like that, but not like Asher, all right, not to the abundance and the uh, uh, the greatness of abundance that uh, that Asher had as a whole, man. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna prove that, all right. But one more word I want to look into is said robust, right? Let me zoom out here. All right. It says robust, strong and healthy, vigorous. But it says of wine or food, strong and rich in flavor or smell. All right. So they have an abundance of a uh, 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 food rich in flavor or smell. And what that's going into, once again, all right, is the abundance uh, that they have in food as a result of the land that they dwell in. Man. All right. Because uh, Asher... Or uh, located in uh, Brazil, you have the Amazon rainforest. All right, you got the Amazon River, and the Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest on the planet Earth, man. All right, and the Amazon ri River is the second largest river on the planet Earth, making that land more fertile than any of the other lands in the Americas, man. And not only in the Americas, in the whole entire world. And we're going to prove that with some information, man. All right, so jumping into this slide here, this is uh, from... Uh, mangabay.com. All right. This is a, a slide entitled the Amazon. All right. So you're checking out all these trees. It's beautiful. It's nice. All right. So bam, it says the Amazon rainforest is located in South America. It is named after the Amazon river, which is the largest river in the world. All right. Next to the Nile, you know, all right. And look at all this greenery here, man. Throughout all this land, there's pineapple trees, there's bananas, you know, you got mangoes, uh, and kiwis, exotic fruit, a lot of exotic uh, animals, and so on and so forth, all throughout this rainforest. But if you notice, like even on this map here, you can see it a little bit better here. It doesn't stretch that 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 fruit, that uh, abundance of uh, of uh, uh, bread doesn't stretch all the way down to where Nathalie's uh, dwelling, man. Now, you do have some in this area, and Esau did a lot of deforestation over in this area, all right? But it's specific towards this tribe, man, all right? This is specific towards Asher. This wasn't said about Nephtali, even though they dwell on the same land. 
Now they got some fertility here, but not to the abundance that Asher has, man. Let you know that that 12 tribes chart is a uh, on point specific to each tribe, man. All right, identifying each tribe, but we're gonna go further. It says the Amazon rainforest includes parts of eight countries, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname. All right, so all these lands, all right, all these areas, the Amazon uh, rainforest stretches to all these lands, man. All right. And even further down here before Esau's deforestation. And it says, uh, but look at this, man. Just just look at all. The, you got the uh, the Amazon River and then all these tributaries, all these water, uh, uh, these uh, rivers stemming off from the main uh, river, man. Making this land uh, so abundant and fertile, man. All right. It says... Let's see. The Amazon is the world's largest rainforest. More than half the Amazon rainforest is located in Brazil. Going further. All right. It says the Amazon rainforest is believed to contain more species than any other ecosystem in the world. As much as a third of the planet's land based species are thought to live in the Amazon region. All right. So they're abundant, man. And they're bred. It doesn't get more fat and bred than this. All right. But we're going to go further, Lord's will. So I'm going to play this clip. I'm going to play two clips, as a matter of fact. But I'm going to start off with this one. Taking up most of the Amazon basin, the Amazon rainforest is mostly contained within Brazil and stretches into Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, and smaller parts in some other South American countries. Here are 10 interesting facts about the Amazon and rainforests in general that you may not have heard before. 1. Around 80% of the food we eat originally came from rainforests. Around 80% of the food we eat originally came from rainforests, right? Now you said rainforest overall, but once again, where Asher dwells, all right, over in Brazil, north of uh, Argentina and Chile, they have the largest rainforest on the planet Earth, all right? So they will be the most abundant in food, all right? The most abundant in bread, all right? Some of the more popular examples include coffee, chocolate, rice, pineapples, and corn. That's reason enough to say- And corn, all right? Now, remember, we looked up the word lachum, all right? It said food in general, food, bread, and then what? It even said corn. So it's spiritual what? That he mentioned specifically corn. They're abundant in that, man, all right? Saw through the spirit. Save the rainforest. Two, tropical rainforests only cover about 6% of the Earth's surface, but- they are home to more than half of the world's total plant and animal species. Three, the forest floor is almost completely dark with less than 1% of the available sunlight making it through the tree canopy above. Four, there are around 3,000 fruits found in rainforests and in the West, we make use of around 200 of them. There's around 3,000 fruits that are found in rainforest, man. Let me, man, let me just bring it out one more time, man. Let me bring it out one more time. Genesis chapter 49, all right, in verse 20, it says, Asher, or Salakia, out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. Now, does it get more fat than this? It doesn't, man, all right? Man, it, hey, it's, if you can't see it, man, it, it ain't meant for you to see Fat, rich, robust, fat, rich of food. All right, let's get back to the clip. Rainforests, and in the West, we make use of around 200 of them. However, indigenous tribes make use of over 2,000. Five. All right, that's all we'll get from that clip. All right, we're going to go a little bit further in this one. of nature in association with Nikon. The Amazon, the green heart of South America, the largest rainforest in the world. These verdant riches. And just a point too, 
uh, the Amazon rainforest is almost the size. The Amazon rainforest alone is almost the size of America, man. All right, of the forty-eight uh, of the forty-eight states in America, excluding like Alaska, to throw if they were just trying to throw there on there or throw that on there. But that lets you know how massive, how abundant. All right, of straight, it's nothing but straight uh, 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 fruits and vegetables all throughout the forest and exotic animals, man. All right. This hold the key to humanity itself by breathing life into the entire planet. In this film, we visit one of our planet's great wildernesses and discover the invisible contribution it makes to our world. When I'm in the Amazon rainforest, I feel like I'm in the middle of the heart of everything. There's like a pulsing and a thriving around that is just deep and really powerful. Yeah, you know, you know what she's into. <laughs> wow. For me, it's almost like being in the Sistine Chapel. Because you look up and you're just blown away by the magnificence of life. It's like a cathedral of life. Home to one in ten species on Earth, the Amazon is the richest forest in the world. The Amazon is the richest forest in the world. Need I to go into the world one more time. All right. It says fat, rich, robust. All right. That's it, man. The richest forest in the world. All right. This is this is what Yaikwa was talking about, man. When he told Asher, all right, when he told uh, Ashar that uh, his bread shall be fat, this is what he was talking about, man. Dwelling in this 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 land full of fruitfulness, man. All right. Hey, call all you lie, y'all about me. I was shy, man. It stretches for almost 7 million square kilometers, covering an area larger than Europe. What strikes you is the endless nature of it. that spreads out like a green rolling carpet in front of you. And you realize that that carpet is doing something incredibly valuable. All right, yeah, that's it on that, you know. So, I mean, you see, you see that uh, uh, there, if you can't see it now, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But nevertheless, I still looked up a uh, world uh, rainforest map just to look at the comparisons of rainforests on the planet Earth. And then lo and behold, <laughs> the, uh, the tropical rainforest of the world. All right. On this map, you see a little bit of Africa. You got some over here near Australia, you know, and so on and so forth. Where Jaffa at in the Isles and everything like that. But uh, over here, right where Asher is at. He's he's dwelling in the biggest tropical rainforest on the planet Earth, man. And you notice that this ain't throughout all of America, man. All right, you got a little bit over here, a little rainforest over here, but nothing um, in comparison to the abundance that was prophesied to be upon Asher, man. So this, when we go to the 12 tribes chart, once again, was on point, all right? When it said that Asher, his bread shall be fat, this only is applying unto uh unto the Asherites, man. All right, because what? Zebulon, all right, down at uh, uh, Zebulon's in here. They don't have fatness compare, uh, in comparison to what Asher has. Naphtali's on the same island, Salaki, the same uh, continent, and they don't nearly have as much uh, 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 bread as Asher has, man. All right, Reuben ain't got it over here. Ephraim, they ain't got it in the uh, in the islands. Now they had some fruitfulness, all right. They got they had some uh, they got some exotic plants and everything like that, but nothing in comparison, man. All right. So that lets you know, man. Hey, it's it's on point through the spirit and power, y'all. About some y'all was shot, all right. So we're gonna go further past that point. <clears throat> this is Genesis chapter forty nine and verse twenty. It says, "Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal." dainties all right so let's focus on the latter part portion of this uh verse now it says he shall yield royal dainties so i want to look up that word royal in the etymology it says fit for a king pertaining to a king royal regal splendid and magnificent all right splendid 
and magnificent. Okay, so let's jump further. Looking up dainties here. It says uh, uh, dainties, uh, dainty food, delight. All right, so royal, magnificent. All right, a uh, uh, food. You know what I'm saying? And of course, we understand that through the through the uh, abundance and the exoticness of the food that they have uh, produced from the Amazon rainforest that they dwell in. But even further, all right, this also goes into uh, uh, goes into their uh, their feast, man. Their, uh, their uh, dainty uh, uh, or royal feast that they have, man. Going into the carnival, man. All right, because in Brazil, they're known for having uh, this huge carnival, man. And this isn't some carnival that, you know, you, you have uh, at the, the state fair each year and you go... Buy some some fried, you know, uh, Oreos or something like that, and some funnel cakes, man. No, they're known for this uh, huge carnival, man. All right, and I'm gonna go into some information here to prove that. But I also, before then, I want to look up this word dainty. All right, it says excellence, elegancy, a luxury. All right, price, value, uh, delicacy, pleasure, uh, worthy, beauty. All right. So it goes into all that, man. Now, I mentioned that they have a carnival uh, each year that they're known for, all right? And the people are, uh, the people, uh, the asteroids are known for having this, not just in one city, it ain't just like one city, uh, and, and that's it, you know? Now, it's throughout all the country, all right? But it says carnival, it says a time of merrymaking before Lent, uh, Shrove Tuesday, blah, 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 to remove meat, literally raising flesh, all right? Flesh. And then, um, let me jump down. It says, a flesh farewell, all right? A feasting or reverently, all right? So jumping back here, it says, he shall yield dainty, or salakia. Let me just read it. It says, uh, out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties, going into these royal feasts that he has, man, going into this carnival that he throws, all right? Which is what? A carnival is nothing but a feast, all right? A general feast of revelry. Bam. Oh, wait. Let me see. Was there a little bit more? A circus or amusement fair, all right? This is going to all tie in together when we go into this information, Lord's will. All right, this is uh, from Time. Uh, Time.com. It says, these 12 facts explain why Rio's carnival is the world's biggest party. Now, Rio is a city... In Brazil, all right, in the south, uh, nobody, east, yeah, the southeast uh, coast of Brazil, near the coast. But it says uh, Rio uh, Janeiro's uh, Carnival in Salaki. I'm going to mispronounce a lot of these words, all right, Salaki. It says Rio de Janeiro's Carnival, which will be celebrated this weekend, is the biggest in the world. All right, so this ain't no just tacky, you know what I'm saying? Carnival. Nah, this is the biggest in the world. This is what they're known for. And these other countries, all right, you bring up Brazil, they're thinking about this, all right? This is something that's placed that they're identified with in this world and this society. And that's what's mentioned in the scriptures, man. His royal dainties, this royal feast, all right? This, ro this carnival, this luxurious carnival that he has, man. It says, <clears throat> here are 12 facts that you never knew about it, all right? It, its origins can be tracked back to the 18th century, introduced by Portuguese immigrants uh, to Brazil and called the Intrudo. It was celebrated by lively crowds who threw lime scented water at, uh, at each other. It was mainly enjoyed by working people. And you already know who the working people were. It was Jake, all right? It's the Asherites down there, whose costumes would mock the clothes and mannerisms of the rich, all right? So let's jump down a little bit further. It says, uh, <clears throat> there are no less than 587 street parties, 587 street parties. That's a lot, man. Or blocos, blocos held in the city from mid January to mid February. So that's a whole month, man. A month of straight revelry, a, a month of a, a, a dainty feast. All right. Carnival, which typically involved bands, costumes and revelry. Re revelers going wild, all right. And I'm gonna jump down thousands or slacky. Last year, Brazil welcomed nearly a million tourists to the city for carnival, 
who are said to have spent U.S. $782 million, according to officials. Hotels and restaurants have long profited from spectacular increasingly spectacularly increasing prices and carnival season all right so this is something that they are known for throughout the planet earth and the lord through the spirit and value of Hashem Yahweh Shai all right um uh gave that um that prophecy to our forefather and it's lining right up to this very day all right this is something that they're going to be known for and the lord pointed it out in the scripture and said that he shall yield uh uh uh, uh dainty uh royal dainties all right so let's go further into it. It says, what is the carnival in Brazil? Brazil, uh, vibrant colors, lively music, and endless spectacle are part of carnival, are part of carnival, a week-long celebration in Brazil. The party is known as Mardi Gras of the Southern Hemisphere thanks to the raucous vibe and brightly colored costumes that fill the streets for days on end. Celebrations and parades are held throughout the country, most notably in the city of Rio de Janeiro and the Brazilian states of Bahia and Pernambuco and travelers can become part of the action. Carnival celebrations vary, but visitors can always expect a great time with tons of dancing and drinking in any part of Brazil. So the point I just wanted to uh, grab in that is that they uh, had these uh, parties, these uh, feasts throughout all the country. Right? So it's just not like in one country, even though there's a main or one city even though there's a main city where they have it at, but throughout the whole country, all right? Identifying uh, the, the tribes, man. So let's go into this, all right? Now, going back to that word, uh, <clears throat> that dainty, or what it said uh, here in Carnival, it says a circus of amuse or amusement fair, all right, which is exactly what that is, this feast is. And it said uh, elegancy and dainty. It said excellence, elegance, elegancy, or elegance, a luxury, uh, beauty, man. All right, and when you look at these feasts that they have, that's that's uh elegance, man. All right, all the bright colors, man. You know, and this is uh, uh the world's uh biggest party, man. This is what they're known for. All right, plain and simple. And you got uh look at plain, you know. By the way. But yeah, man, that's hey, that's look at the the feathers, all that, man. That's a dainty feast, all right. If you can't see it, man, you can't see it, all right. It wasn't meant for you, all right. So that's plain and simple, man. This is only fitting the tribe of Asher. So let's jump further into it, all right. Now we're gonna jump to Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three, and I'm gonna read verse twenty-three since I mentioned it earlier, all right. This is uh speaking on that Thali. Let's go back to our map here. <clears throat> well, we'll go to the twelve tribes chart. It says, uh, Nephtali, the Argentinians to Chileans, all right, and we look on the map here, bam, you got, so Nephtali's right here, and then you got above that, you got Asher, all right, and it says in the prophecy, Deuteronomy 33 uh, three and 23, in the end of Nephtali, he said, oh, Nephtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessings of the Lord, Yahweh possessed thou the west and the south. So we already established <clears throat> that um the northern kingdom, all right, uh, uh the from Simeon on all the way down to Issachar, all came down, all came over to the uh <clears throat> to the Americas, right? But it said that what that he would possess the west and the south. So in the lands of the America, he would have to be, he would have to possess the south and the west of somewhere. All right, and where is that at? Man, I got all these tabs to lock you. All right, going back to the map right here, Argentina to uh, Chile. All right, that's what he's got. He's holding it down. So let's go back to the scripture here in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 23, 24. It says, and of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. And that's right. They have a lot of children, man. And, and they live long, which we'll get to that later because of the uh, uh, because of them able to live off the land, man. Not having to go to McDonald's and eat GMO food, you know, they living straight off the land. But it says, uh, and of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And this goes into the dissension between uh, the tribe of Asher with the so-called primitive Asherites, the ones that are living off the land, that are uh, uh, staying away from uh, technology and so on and so forth. And then you got the modern, uh, modern Asherites that are 
uh, amalgamated to the ways and the customs of Esau and his technology and so on and so forth, man. There's dissension in, uh, between them, but that's what that goes into. And it says, and let him dip it and let him dip his foot in oil. Read that again. All right. And let him dip his foot in oil. Now, what's that talking about? That's talking about the oil. All right. Uh, uh, that um, that the land is fertile with. All right. For lack of better terms. All right. So let's pull out some information just to edify on that point. It says the world's largest oil reserves by country. It says, uh, let's see, I'm going to just jump down. All right, so you see the United States is at 10. You got Libya, Russia in there, All right, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran. That's why Esau is trying to go in there and destroy it, take control over their resources, Saudi Arabia. And then what? Hold on, we got Venezuela. Hold on, where's Venezuela at again? Right there where it said Asher would be. So surprisingly, <laughs> according to prophecy, through our forefather Yaikwa, given to him through the spirit and power of Yahweh, all right, that uh, uh, uh that was given unto him, all right, he said that what that he shall dip his foot in oil. And here it is, Venezuela has the largest oil reserve, man. All right, and oil is throughout all this land over here, man. All right, but let's jump back into that article. It says Venezuela, with over 300 million barrels of proven reserves, Venezuela has the largest amount of proven oil reserves in the world. The country's oil is a relatively new discovery. Previously, Saudi Arabia had always had the number one position. The oil sand deposits in Venezuela are similar to those in Canada. Venezuela also boasts plenty of conventional oil deposits. Venezuela's Orinoco tar sands are significantly less visible viscous the Canada's so the oil sands there can be extracted using conventional oil extract extraction methods you know I don't really I really didn't need to read all that but the point being is that they're number one in oil and that's what our forefather gave as a hint to identify where Asher would be at in these last days that he would be dipping his feet in oil meaning that what his land is going to be uh, uh have abundance in oil man all right but let's go further into it <clears throat> Another article from, uh, let's see, voyagephotosmenu.com, mineral resources in South America. All right, it says South America is relatively rich in mineral resources. And I'm going to jump down here. Large quantities of oil and natural gas are found in several areas within South America. The greatest quantities are located in the sediment sedimentary layers surrounding Venezuela's lake, Maricoba, and adjacent Caribbean coastal margin. Venezuela also has major deposits of oil and natural gas in the areas surrounding El Tigre. The country is one of the largest, one of the world's largest oil producers and exporters. The Venezuelan government's seizures of operational control of foreign oil, uh, private oil operations in 2007 had an important uh, implications for the region. So the point being is that what? Venezuela is... Uh, a mass producer of oil, all right? The number one mass producer in oil at that, man, all right? <clears throat> so let's jump back to the prophecy. Deuteronomy chapter 32, uh, 33, and Salaki, Deuteronomy 33, and verse 24, and of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children, let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. Now, what's that talking about? It's also talking about the mineral resources that they have underneath their feet, all right, where they dwell at, all right? So it says, thy shoes shall be iron and brass. So according to this prophecy here, Asher, all right, the Asherites in these last days will be able to be identified because uh, of the amount of uh, iron and brass that's underneath their feet, all right, in their land where they dwell. So let's see if we can identify that. So in the same article that we just read from, I'm going to jump down here. It says iron and ferro alloys. South America contains about one fifth of the world's iron ore reserves. The most important beds are located in Brazil and Venezuela, supplying domestic iron and steel industries as well as significant exports. The great majority of the continent's reserves are in Brazilian states 
of Minas, Gerais, Pará, and Mato Grosso do Sul, where loads of magnetite and hematite ores contain up to 50 to 65% iron content. And Venezuela, sites like, sites like containing a uh, Salaki, I skipped a line. It says sites like Mount Bolivar and El Pau and the Sierra de Emataca at the base of Guyana Highlands have reserves of ore containing a high percentage of iron. Uh, yeah, high percentage of iron. Salaki, I didn't mean to say it like that. All right. But uh, it, so pretty much it's saying throughout that region where it says on the 12 tribe chart where they would be, all right, from Colombians to Uruguayans, they have uh, a large amount of iron, which is what is prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter, all right? But we're not done yet, all right? So, list of countries by iron ore production, all right? So, we're going to just go straight to this list, and this is a list from 2015, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that it's still uh, the same. It says uh, the leading in iron production is Australia, and then right behind Australia is Brazil, all right? So here it is. <laughs> the prophecies, all right, are not failing, man. Uh, 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 where uh, where Asher is dwelling, according to the uh, the chart, is accurate on point which eat with each point and each prophecy that we brought out, man, and no other tribe it's fitting all these prophecies like Asher is, man, which lets you know that this is a specific, all right, uh, a specific prophetic ID to this tribe, man. So once again, all right, list of uh, countries by iron ore production, you got at number two, uh, Brazil, all right, right where Asher's at. Bam. So uh, let's go back to the prophecy, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And verse uh, 25, it says, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. So underneath uh, where, where uh, Asher dwells, they're going to have a lot of iron. We just proved that. They're second in iron production in the world. And then it says brass. Now brass, all right, is made out of, it says brass is a metallic alloy that is made of copper and zinc, all right? So according to prophecy, Asher, uh, for them to also have uh, iron, we already proved that, and brass, they have to have copper and zinc to create brass. So let's see where they line up in copper and zinc production, man. So let's see, list of countries by copper copper production. It says uh, at number one, you got Chile. Now Chile, that's where Nephtali's at, man. So does that mean that the prophecy is failing? No, because what? You need copper and zinc to create brass, all right? But it says you got Chile at number one, China at number two, and right at uh, number three, you got Peru. Let's go back to the uh, where the tribes are. Where's Peru at? Right there where it says that they will be from Colombian all the way to Uruguay. All right? Plain and simple. So what? They're number uh, three. Going back here. <clears throat> Salakia. They're number three in copper production. So they're number uh, three in uh, number three in zinc and number three in copper production. If I'm not or or Salaki. yeah yeah yeah. Well number well we're gonna go into it Salaki. All right, so number three in uh, copper production. Let's go to zinc. It says uh, this is an article from WorldAtlas.com list of countries by zinc production because we need these two minerals to create uh to create uh copper or uh bronze. Slappy. Is that what it was? Going a little fast here. Bear with me. Just want to make sure I'm being clear. Uh, yeah, brass. All right. We need copper and zinc to create brass. So we're seeing where they line up as far as uh, zinc production. So right here we have Peru. Peru is the world's second largest producer of zinc. So there it goes right there. So what? Under his foot is, <laughs> hey, under his foot is not only the oil, all right, but he's got the brass and the iron, man. Plain and simple, all according to prophecy, man. Peru is the world's second largest producer of zinc. 
Actually, Peru's main economic activity is mining of not only zinc, but also gold, tin, lead, silver, and copper. In the year 2013, Peru exported minerals worth $41.2 billion. Zinc mining in Peru began slowly in the 20th century. However, the high elevations of the high lands uh, uh, were a great challenge which has been overcome over the years. So that's it right there, man. You know, I mean, the point's been proven, man. So anybody that's trying to say that uh, the 12 tribes chart is inaccurate, all right, there's no way to identify uh, the tribe specifically. They're going off, man, because we just identify Asher specifically because all these prophecies don't fit anyone else, man, all right? No other uh, tribe on this side is fitting these prophecies that are written about with Asher, man. And where are they at? In Colombia, Venezuela, and so on and so forth, man. So that's it. You know, I'm going to end it off with this preset. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse... Uh, in verse, <clears throat> I'll start at verse, I'll start at verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Uh, I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is, the, which is of the most high, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that's right, man. All right. You have to make spiritual connections to be able to see uh, to see these things clearly, man. All right. If you're trying to think carnally, all right, if you're trying to, if you need a specific tablet that says uh, 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 the, 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 the Brazilians, all right, are from the tribe of Asher and the Venezuelans are from the tribe of Asher in the Lashawankodash, pure Hebrew, man. All right, if you need that, then hey, hey, you ain't got it, man. All right, it's it's plain, it's plain, man. All right, it says it's plain into the holy, but a stumbling block into the wicked, man. But it says, uh, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So these people that are coming against the twelve tribes chart is because what they aren't spiritual. All right, because these things are spiritually discerned. All right, the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has to give you the faith and to believe in these things, man. All right, so I'm going to end it right there, man, and I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.